So over the weekend, this car was on a trip and pretty much went down, bit the dust. And this is pretty much the worst case scenario you can experience while a car is being rented. So the guest called and complained that the car wasn't starting. So I just thought initially it was a battery issue, which a lot of times they leave the lights on or don't put it on auto and the battery will die. But clearly it's something else going on with this vehicle. And when we got it towed back to our shop, which I put the guests in another vehicle, and did a couple of tests on it and it is having a low compression pretty much means that the motor is done so like i said this is one of the worst case scenarios in the rental business but if you're renting out enough cars it's inevitable you can't avoid it so at this point if and when this happens to you you'll really only have two choices at this point right you can either sell the car as it is in its current condition which if you're financing the vehicle that's not even a choice or you can put this vehicle back together. And when I'm out buying these cars and looking at cars to put on my rental fleet, I actually do that first before I get the car. Meaning I check on what the cost would be for the most expensive part, which most of the time it's motor and transmission. So every car I buy, I always do research on it. How much is the motor? How much is the transmission? Uh, what are known issues with this car? Uh, are these issues worth it? I compile all this data together before I purchase the vehicle. So this is my third Nissan Maxima. This particular one is a 2011 one. It is fully, fully loaded. Even has a double sunroof on it, uh, GPS navigation, heated seats. I mean, if you had one of these in 2011, you was the man. Pretty much what I'm about to do with this car is I'm about to put it back together because I've only had this car for three months. It grossed by 1500, probably made a little over a grand. I factor in insurance and tires I had to put on it. I was into this car for about six grand. So if I was to sell this car as is in its condition, I mean, it might bring $1,500, it might bring a thousand because it does need a motor. So like I said, I am gonna put another motor in this car. I'm gonna put it back on Toro and this car is gonna pay for itself and the repairs. So pretty much, I'm gonna tell you guys how I get an idea on parts of my vehicles before I purchase them. So a lot of times I use this app or website called carparts.com and you can see I already have my information here because I was looking up parts for this car. So it's 2011 Nissan Maxima. So I'm gonna select the part. Now in this case, I do need an engine for this vehicle. So I'm gonna select engine. So you can see right here, these are third party sellers and they use this app almost like a marketplace where they'll post uh, parts and you can purchase it directly from them. A lot of these are like pull aparts or um, people that break the cars down and they sell the parts. So you can see over here, there's a, a different range and the ones that say call, you can always just call them for more information and can haggle them on the price a little bit. So you can see over here that the average price of this engine is, you know, 750, 850, and it shows the miles right next to it. So pretty much for 750, I can get one with about 115,000 miles, which is not too bad. If I want to spend a little bit more, you see one right here, 1350 with 27,000 miles. But in this case, since these transmissions are a ticking time bomb, I'm not gonna try to get one with 27,000 miles because most likely the transmission will go out before this motor can hit 100,000 miles. So if I was getting some around 114,000, I know I can at least rent this car for about another year before I sell it. And I'm gonna be planning to sell it for what I paid for it around the 6,000 mark. So this is a good criteria and I would check these before I even buy the cars just so you know what you're looking at. So before you buy any car, check out the motor, check out the transmission, see what it costs. So pretty much that's why you're never gonna see any Kia or Hyundais in my fleet because those motors are ridiculous in price. Now I got a price on this actual motor. As you guys know, I have my own shop location over here so it's not gonna cost me anything to put the motor in it but it is gonna take away from other jobs I could be doing and making money. So it's not always like I'm not losing money, but if you were to purchase this motor and take it to a shop or have a shop purchase it for you, this is a good app to use just to get an idea if you're overspending. And what I would suggest to you guys, if I'm doing this job for somebody else, I probably charge about $700, but I always add in a couple extra hundred dollars just in case if I put the motor in, it's not working. and it's best for you to pay that, pay your mechanic a little extra, because if we do buy a motor from a third party, sometimes they'll pay us labor to take it out, but sometimes they won't. So if I charge you an extra couple hundred dollars, that means that if anything goes wrong 
with the motor once I put it in there, I'll be taking it back out and we'll get another one and you won't have to spend any more money. A lot of times these third party sellers will give you a, a 30, a 60 or 90 day warranty on the motor and a lot of times we'll pass that on to the customers. So make sure your mechanic is doing that also. A lot of these third party uh, sellers do offer a warranty but maybe your mechanic might not want to throw, back, throw that in there because he doesn't want to do the job. And like I said, we do charge a couple extra hundred dollars, but we'll pass the warranty down to the customer um, just so you have a peace of mind when doing the job. So make sure you guys are using this website, checking your parts of vehicles before you purchase them. Just know what you're getting into. And if you're purchasing a lot of the same vehicles, just know the defects of that vehicle, know what goes wrong with it, uh, know the price of the motor, the price of the transmission. It's good to do your research on these things if you plan on being in this game for a while. So besides using the main auto parts stores like AutoZone, O'Reilly's, and Advanced Auto Parts, I also love CarParts.com because I could find all those little small tricky parts that these stores might not carry and a lot of times I can shop around for color options and just get a better overall pricing and when it comes to motors and transmissions this is my number one go-to marketplace to find what I need but there's different parts that I also get from eBay and Amazon like keys and uh, you know control arms or things like that so check all around for these parts and don't get so used to going to the dealership because this is like my last last resort I only go to the dealership for parts that are special order so start checking around just to save a dollar here and there it definitely adds up in the end and when it comes to buying parts like body parts certifit is my number one go-to spot especially if the car is a few years old because they do have aftermarket bumpers fenders hoods that you can get for a fraction of the cost now when it comes to labor and mechanic shops like i stressed in this video it's very 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 important to make sure you're having a warranty on your labor and also the parts because the last thing you want especially if you're in the same game that i'm in where we're renting out older cars you know it's inevitable that one of your cars is gonna you know bite the dust one of these days especially if you're messing with dodge chrysler or older luxury cars like it's bound to happen so if you do want to put your car back together just make sure the shop you're going to does have these warranty options and if you are in the atlanta area and you would like to work with me i'm gonna drop the link to my instagram go ahead and send me a dm on there now i take most motor and transmission jobs or i pretty much take anything besides electrical work unless it's kind of like straightforward so definitely shoot me a dm if you have some work for me or if you're interested in working with me as far as repair goes and i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can um, other than that i hope everybody got some gems from this video i hope you learned something and just don't be so discouraged when things don't go your way there's no business that's a hundred percent straightforward where everything is going to work out in your favor there's always highs and lows as long as the overall trajectory of your business is moving up then you're doing the right thing so i don't stress out over things like this anymore i just try to find ways to make my situation easier and prepare me for the next run even if that means cutting out certain vehicles that i buy um, like i just mentioned dodge chrysler you know you guys want to stay away from those kind of cars uh these older luxury cars you know these chevy cruises um, stay away from these cars because the motors do blow and for me it's not even worth it putting a motor in these cars if you guys are new to my channel and you already haven't subscribed i would definitely appreciate it if you check some of my other videos out and subscribe if you like what you see also tune in for future videos i will be trying to put out a video at least once a week or once every two weeks for you guys so let me know what you think down in the comments um, other than that i'll catch you guys next week